Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of Chaya Chats. Uh, my name is Ruben Thomas. I'm joined again by Reverend Father Matt Alexander. Uh, Matt Achen, thank you for joining us again. Thank you. It's good to be back. Yeah, it's awesome to have you here, Achen. You know, obviously, we're doing this remotely now through Skype. So for anyone listening, I apologize if there's a decrease in the sound quality. But thankful that we're able to have this opportunity to still talk to each other. Um, so social distancing. Social distancing, yes. But that won't stop the chaya or the chats. Um, that's it. How has life been for you, uh, for you and the family with social distancing and quarantining? Uh, how's everyone doing? It's been different. It's been, uh, it's been a challenge, um, as it is for everybody. Um, but thankfully, we're doing well. You know, everybody's home and we're just kind of balancing everything. It feels weird uh, as a priest um, celebrating Kurbana with only, you know, skeleton crew and, um, and, and just relying on other people, knowing that other people are on the other side of that camera and uh, I miss seeing everybody. I miss seeing people's faces and talking to people and hearing all these things, even like um, the craziness in the church. I miss all that. Um, but and I miss seeing all the campus ministry kids. I miss seeing all like our MGSM kids and um, and all that as well. So, uh, but but it is what it is. This is where we are, making the best of uh, what we can do. How it goes for you? How's everything? Yeah, kind of the same. It's been a struggle, uh, especially being alone from everyone. I mean, get to see more of the family. Um, but like you said, not being able to go to church has been real different. Um, you know, it's something that I think we, we were used to. Um, and now, especially with Holy Week that just happened, having to do a Holy Week from home is it's a different experience, one that I wouldn't wish to do again. Uh, I don't know if I've ever missed one before. Yeah, uh, there are probably people who've been, you know, many, many decades of their life and never missed a Pesach HaKurbana or never missed an Easter or a Good Friday. And for the first time after, you know, some people I've heard like seven, eight de decades that um, now they're missing one for the very, very first time. And it's heartbreaking. It's hard. Um, it was hard to uh, usually Pesach were giving communion out to hundreds of people. And um, and now uh, to sing the communion sim hymn only like twice uh, was, was a little bit heartbreaking. Um, but nevertheless, you know, we're doing the best that we can for the people and for the safety of everybody. And these things are necessary. You know, we have to mm -hmm. uh, we have to care about um, the health of everybody and care about um, and take every precaution that's necessary that we possibly can um, while still um, praying on behalf of uh, of all creation, um, offering the liturgy for all those who are going through difficult times um, all, and doing the best that we can, giving hope and uh, to, to everybody who might be struggling, um, praying for those who are departed and couldn't be given a proper funeral uh, or a proper burial and such. And that's, um, that's what the church does. And I'm glad that, you know, with the technology that we have, you know, thankfully we've been able to, a lot of people have been able to live stream a lot of the services. So that was really great. And I think even more than that, just the other ministries as well. Uh, we've, now, at least for my church, we started having weekly MGOCSM meetings, weekly focus meetings, other, and other types of ministries. And we're getting more numbers than ever, right? And I think that's a good sign, too, um, that more people are tuning into church, tuning into the ministries that are happening. I'm amazed at by what some people have done with their homes and creating like a nice church um, space and area. And uh, sometimes, you know, and, and working so hard at this to make sure that, you know, their their whole family is able or they themselves or their whole family is able to worship. And I think all that effort is, um, it bears so much fruit. Um, sometimes I feel like all those people on the other side of the camera praying from their homes um, are higher up um, in the heavens than than we who stand at the altar. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful, incredible thing that, that, that I mean, God meets us where we are. You know, uh, we just had... Um, the gospel reading, you know, we just had for after the resurrection was, you know, the locked doors. Um, but Jesus came through that into the upper room and, um, and met the disciples where they were um, in the midst of their fear. Uh, he, he was there. Uh, and so he meets all of us as well, uh, whether it be home or in the church or, um, or out at work in the hospitals. And um, the Lord is with us always. Right. No, and, and that's that's a great uh, that's a great thing that we have. Um, that we still have that that can't be taken away from us no matter what's going on right and that sort of you know brings us into what we wanted to talk about today 
obviously with the coronavirus going on and we we're all stuck in our homes uh, away from society now and i think we're seeing more cases of people having a little bit of fear a little bit of anxiety um, for a number of different reasons especially if we're looking at the youth right looking at the college age or even the high school age students so if you wouldn't mind like can you like share with some of your experiences or something that you've heard from kids about what they're going through what they're anxious about what they're feeling some fear about yeah i think you know whether it be the youth or the adults everybody overall uh, maybe not the youngest kids um, to an extent, they're probably having a blast with everybody around. Um, but nevertheless, um, I think that, yeah, I mean, there's a limited circle of people and there's a lot of fear. There's just a lot of fear everywhere you go. You go to the grocery store, you go to the store and, um, and everybody's just fearful of each other, trying to stay away from each other. Um, and rightly so obeying things and such, but, um, there's that fear. You can sense people's fear, um, as they go um, from place to place. Uh, as they interact with other people, there's just a lot of fear and, the, the, and a lot of anxiety. Uh, there's a, a lot of that. And a lot of that is we constantly watching the news when you're at home. There's nothing to do. So people just, um, they do the things that they're supposed to do, whether it be work, if they can. But other people, a lot of times they're just watching, have the TV on. And, and the news is just filled with uh, fear, uh, full story after anxi- anxious story. And rightly so, because people are suffering. Um, but we get inundated with so much and, you know, we can only take so much, uh, we get filled up with so much fear, so much anxiety, so much isolation. Um, and we, as human beings, we can only handle so much. And, um, and even that it'll start to turn into like anger. It'll start to turn into frustration, this feeling of helplessness, um, and then kind of moves into this feeling of blame and finding something to blame, but you can't blame anybody. So we just find some scapegoat. Um, to kind of launch out that anger at whether it be somebody close to us, whether it be somebody in society. And uh, it's just, it's a tough time. It's a difficult time to live in, to just close people up in the house in that way. Among the young people, I'm so heartbroken for all those kids who um, are missing their, aren't able to have a high school graduation as previous classes have had. It's uh, difficult, you know, they don't get to, they work hard, you know, some of them are did this or that honor society or this or that accomplishment in school, and they won't get to have the ta- that tassel or, you know, that recognition, um, or just, you know, just graduating and the accomplishment that that is, they worked all these years, and everybody kept telling them, you know, graduation, you know, it's all about that, um, building up to graduation, and then lo and behold, that's taken away. Um, not that the accomplishment of graduating is taken away, but that opportunity to celebrate it uh, with all your peers and everybody else who was part of that journey. Um, and then also the parents looking on and feeling proud as well and uh, family members and such. And I'm, I'm especially heartbroken for that group um, and being robbed of that opportunity and that uh, accomplishment. Right. And not just, I mean, graduation is like the main thing, but especially senior year, there's so many fun activities that the school plans, right? And everyone's missing out right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, and not, trips. yeah. Like, yeah. It's the opportunity to say goodbye. I mean, it was kind of this rushed, sudden goodbye. It wasn't even a goodbye. It was just schools canceled for a couple of weeks and then it gets extended. So nobody really got to say goodbye to their teachers or classmates or their friends, um, whether it be for one year or whether it be for the end of high school. Um, a lot of the college kids, you just suddenly you're moving home. Uh, and everything was going online. And that community that you built up all of this past year is just suddenly taken away. Um, and that's hard. That's really, I feel really, uh, um, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I guess uh, I sympathize and I feel, um, uh, I feel right. their hurt. Right. And even with like looking at the college students, um, I know plenty of uh, seniors who are also ready to graduate. Um, But who are also entered the next phase of life, whether that's, you know, graduate school or uh, a lot of them looking for jobs now and they can. Right. A lot of companies now, like with the with the financial situation that the economy is in. And I mean, people are already losing their jobs. So people who are ready to enter the workforce, they can't uh, anymore. And like their plans have been put on hold. A lot of internships have been canceled for the summer. And, you know, so it does, you know, for all of those people like you know, you sort of have a plan in your mind about how the next few months go and then something comes along like like this virus, right? And then it just changes everything. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. It's hard. Um, it's so hard to work so hard for such a good time and everything. They expect it to go one way and then suddenly uh, within the span of a few weeks, everything turned completely. Like you said, how do you apply for jobs um, when when the whole, I mean, millions are unemployed right now and the whole place is shut down? Uh, it's uh, it's very difficult. You know, they work so hard and that can lead to uh, like this bitterness and inside of just, you know, of why um, and hurt. Um, and they worked so hard for these things and it, it's, it is a difficult time. I think the uncertainty makes it worse because you don't know when it's going to be over. And if, and then that makes, um, making decisions very difficult. Um, if there, you knew that there was a limited amount of time, then maybe, um, I can endure this for a set amount of time until I come through the other end. Um, but that uncertainty, it definitely makes it worse on this age group. Right. Like you said, we can't predict it. And even when the, the experts um, talk about it, at the end of the day, it's just their predictions either, right? No one knows what's going to happen, right? And that, like you said, leads to a little bit more fear of the unknown, what's coming, right? Yeah. Um, and I think uh, an important point you mentioned earlier about now everyone being away from each other, away from their their communities, right? Away from their social groups. I think that's a big thing um, that people are dealing with right now. Um, like you said, like we're, we're all like social beings right now. Um, and now we've been like restricted to just the home. And even with yeah. technology, right? Technology can only take us so far. And we, we're usually very dependent on it, right? But I think now we're actually missing that personal, physical, human aspect of life right now. Yeah. There is a fundamental, there's some benefits to being isolated, to cutting down from being so busy all the time. Um, but Ultimately, you know, we're communal beings. We're people. We're designed to be in community. We're designed um, to interact with each other. Nobody is meant to be um, off completely by themselves. You see this, you know, Adam and Eve in the garden. Uh, it's not good for man to be alone, and so um, Eve is is given to him. And even in the midst of all of this, when they make the mistake, um, when they sin, they turn on each other, and the sin isolates them. Um, and then you see this through scripture. Every time somebody sin, it's isolating. Uh, and so sin is like drawing people towards isolation, whereas uh, the church, um, God draws people towards communion, um, towards being with one, one another and you know, living in the light as he is in the light. So being seen as, you know, and authentically and honestly and, and knowing and being known in that way. And that's the kingdom, too, as we grow um, towards that. And that's how that will be as well. Um, now, now we see dimly in a mirror, but then we will, uh, everything will be clear. Um, this is, and, and right now when we isolate everybody, when we put everybody in their homes, some out, you know, are isolated with families, but some are isolated by themselves. Um, even the monastic, um, lives in community. Even the hermit is called to come in, um, back to the community, um, for the, for the, for the church services. Um, to be a part of all of these things, you know, the church, the communion that the Lord draws his disciples to, um, breaking bread with one another, um, this um, sharing his body and blood with them, um, he's uniting, he's putting people together. Um, this is what the Spirit calls us to. And now um, to kind of isolate people and then take them out of the church. And, um, and you're right, technology, we were able to do the best that we can, but you know, to not be able to to give peace to to somebody else, to um, to see somebody else uh, smile, to to hear them, um, the unpredictability of things. It's hard, um, and it's not the way we're meant to live. And I think that that can be very damaging in a spiritual sense, in a mental sense, in a physical sense, um, for all of us. Uh, and we have to find ways to actively combat that. Um, though the church is going through a difficult time, though the people, the whole world is going through a difficult time, we, the church, have to respond. And um, as everybody's isolating, figuring out a way to break down whatever barriers we can uh, and communicate with people and hear people and listen to people and talk to people and let people share their struggles. Uh, and uh, we just do the best we can that way. Right. And like you said, you know, being isolated, it, it can bring up different emotions of bitterness or anger, right? I think we're all feeling a little bit of cabin fever, right? And, you know, and unfortunately, it tends to flare up against the people that we're right next to, 
right? Which in this case happens to be our families, right? Our family members, our siblings, our parents, right? And like you said, this could be a, a chance where we see a lot more conflict too, right? But I think it gives us an opportunity to also strengthen those relationships too. Yeah, yeah, it does. It, 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 and oftentimes we lash out at the people closest to us uh, in anger because we feel safest with them um, as opposed to the random stranger. Uh, but sometimes it's the opposite, you know, we, uh, the anonymity sometimes like of being online, people lash out in anger there, um, because they know there's less consequences and feel, they feel safer in that way. But, but you're right, it can lead to these conflicts and these difficulties. And I hope it's hard to know what, you know, happening behind everybody's door, but I imagine a lot of people are struggling with this frustration and anger and, um, hurtful things have been said. And, um, and the key there, like you said, this is a good opportunity to learn to apologize um, to humble ourselves and to, to learn to live together and to bear with one another. Um, it's a, it is a good opportunity to spend a lot of time as a family. You know, normally people are so busy. It's good to sit down and have dinner, um, to talk to one another, to ask people, hey, how are you? How's work today? How is this today? How is um, that today? Instead of just being engrossed in video games or um, or sleeping all day or doing whatever else um, that we can fall into either a lot of fear, then we can also fall into a lot of laziness and sloth to kind of not engage so I don't have any fear, right? And uh, that temptation is also there. Um, but uh, to be productive, you know, it's a good opportunity to, to learn something, to pick up a new language, to, to, to grow, to build up those disciplines spiritually, to pray, to read your scriptures. Um, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity. We have the time um, to do it on our own and as families uh, or with other people as well even. And I think you mentioned earlier that, you know, you've seen a lot of families start making their, their homes a mini church, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that's a great thing to do. Um, you see everyone, like families, starting to pray more, right? Trying, uh, starting to read scripture more, right? And I think that's probably one of the ways that, you, like you mentioned, to combat that anxiety, to combat that fear, right? I, I think you need to bring in Christ into your homes even more during this time. Yeah. Yeah, learning to trust God and to place things into his hands and just do the best that we can um, to be logical, to be reasonable um, in all the things that we do and not to take over, you know, take we shouldn't take risks and then just expect God to make up for it. That's not going to that's not how this works. But to make decisions with a rational mind, to not have a spirit of fear, but a, a spirit of uh, power, of sound mind, as uh, St. Paul says to Timothy, but um, to do um, things in, in, in a way that um that, that makes sense and you know like you said you know it, it's a wonderful time can be a wonderful time for a lot of people um to spend in prayer to connect with people even if you're by yourself and in your apartment or uh or separated from people that you care about then you know, make the effort whether it be video call or um write a letter or do this or that just do the best that you can and um and communicate with other people and to be a part of that and make that effort. When you make that effort, I think it uh, it shows and you feel it too. And, you know, not not to go too much on one of our previous episodes, right? But like you said, during this time, I think a lot of people, you know, might start to wonder why this is going on. They They want to blame people, right? And a lot of times we would like to ask God, like, what's going on, right? Like, how long is this going to go on? Why is this happening, right, for so long with no cure, right? So many people getting infected and dying, right? Um, so I think there might be a couple of different ways to approach it. Either you're looking at it as a reason, like, why does God doing allowing this? Or is God allowing this for a better purpose, right? And I think it's like that's something that people might also be dealing with, too. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of suffering and a lot of people who are sick and in the hospital. And that's heartbreaking, too, when you have somebody suffering and suffering in isolation in a hospital. They can't um, even you can't even visit somebody who's um, sick with this. Uh, and, and, and you know, they have big ups and downs. One day they're doing great. The next day they just, um, they crash and um, then they're on the ventilator. And again, it's all in isolation. You're just kind of relying on the healthcare workers of the goodness of their heart and their busyness. They do the best to help people communicate with their families. And it's just, it's hard. It's really, really, really hard in that sense. And, you know, it, it's understandable to ask God, why, why are we going through this? And I don't know if I have the answers for all that, but somewhat we can't always blame God for everything. Um, 
you know, some things that, you know, we do are our own fault as a people, as a community, um, we bear responsibility to, um, for the things that, that happen. You know, we live in a sinful world. We make sinful choices. We make um, decisions, and sometimes the consequences are borne out. It's not like um, we have a global society in the, what we have today, and um, we do uh, a lot. And I'm not blaming anybody um, in particular. I'm not going to blame any particular country or any this or that. But the thing is, um, we also have to accept our own corporate responsibility as a people. Um, for the decisions that we made that sometimes make things worse. You know, we can't blame God for global warming. We can't blame God for um, the different decisions and different things that, that we've made that have made things worse for not being prepared when people have warned us about things uh, and such. So, But nevertheless, I think in the midst of our suffering, God is with us. God is helping. Um, God is strengthening. Um, his mercy is upon us. As people, and and despite what we go through, um, the Lord and His love and His kindness um, will always be there for us, uh, and such. And, um, and that's that's His mercy and that's His grace. That um, that no matter what, we're never alone in our struggle. That the Lord is with us at all times, um, helping us, strengthening us, as He's always been, um, whether we realize it or not. Right, as we've been talking about, you know, fear and anxiety, right, and. It- seeing how we just ended Holy Week and we just finished Bright Week, right? And I think the message throughout was about peace. And I think that's really important to carry forward to combat all of those things, right? The peace that comes from the resurrection, from Christ himself. You know, I think it goes more so than we could imagine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, peace doesn't mean the absence of troubles or suffering. It doesn't mean that, you know, the disciples, they received the Lord's peace, um, peace be with you. But it didn't mean that they didn't suffer the rest of their life. They didn't. They they went out to the, the world and proclaimed the gospel, and they suffered for that um, as apostles. They, they were martyred. Um, it was not an easy journey for them. But peace meant that no matter what came their way, the Lord was with them, that God was with them in the midst of. In the midst of the storm, the Lord is with us. Um, and that's true peace. That's true uh, that's it's we can we can be tranquil we can no matter what comes our way we can be at peace with ourselves and be at peace with God um, because God is with us and as long as God is with us then um, no matter what comes our way we'll be okay uh, not even not nothing can separate us from um, the love of God and and we can see from a kingdom perspective that 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 all it will be um, that we have hope that all will be okay. And I think that's great to for everyone to keep in mind moving forward through through this crisis that we're in. Um, like you said, we we don't know how long it's going to last. Um, we don't know how much worse it's going to get. Um, but always having that hope and trust in God, right? And doing our best, you know, to make the most out of this situation, whether it's with our own personal relationships with our families, with our friends, um, and to strengthen our own spiritual life. You know, in one some ways, you could look at it as, as a blessing as well. Yeah, you know, not only that, also in addition to all those things, especially you know, reaching out to people who might be in need, um, who might be lonely, who might be suffering, who might be you know struggling financially. Um, anybody you know, to to actively reach out. This is a moment where we shouldn't wait for people to come to us, um, but we as the church and every member of the church and everybody um, should be reaching out to people in the church but outside the church. Everybody who um, they interact with, you know, and taking care of creation the best that we can, and um, being there and suffering together in this. And as this isolates people, it's for us to break down those barriers, barriers, and trying to reach out to anybody who might be in need. Um, in any way whatsoever, find those opportunities, uh, and that's uh, that's our calling um, as we go through struggle to to not focus inward, but to focus outward, um, to do what we can. You know, to we can't meet God. Many people cannot meet God um, in church through the communion, but you still can meet people in in your neighbor. And those, uh, you know, um, for when I, w- when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. And when I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was in prison, you visited me. Um, vis- you know, in that sense, maybe you can't go visit somebody in their house, but maybe you can uh, drive up to their house and talk to them from, you know, the street. Um, just check, check up on the people um, around you. Right. 
And I think that's a great message, right? Having that love for your neighbor that surpasses isolation, right? That surpasses all types of boundaries. Um, and that's the love of Christ too. I think that we should keep trying to, you know, grow that type of love in our own lives too. I think that's probably the best thing that we can do throughout this, you know, throughout this crisis that we have. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too as well. Um, and it's nice seeing you. It's nice hearing from you, Ruben. Um, especially, uh, it's nice hearing and seeing from um, all the different, I'm happy to hear all the MGSMs and the campus ministries are doing the best that they can to try and meet and, um, and such. And Sunday schools I hear are trying to meet. Um, it's nice. It's nice that the church is meeting whatever comes its way and, um, and just doing the best that it can um, out of love. Um, because this is what we do. We figure out a way to love people. We figure out a way to care about people um, when it becomes difficult to do it the way we normally would. That sounds great. You know, it'd be a great day when we can all come back to church and we can see you watching face to face. You know, yeah. uh, that'd be a great day. Um, but until then, like you said, uh, let's everyone, I hope everyone stays safe um, and keep practicing good habits at home with their family members, uh, with their friends. And please stay tuned for another episode of Chaya Chats. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing everybody soon.